Beginning with the gramophone that was introduced in the late 1800s to streaming music for free on apps like Spotify and Pandora on our phones that weigh only a few ounces, how we listen to music has changed tremendously. Just in the past 20 years, we have moved beyond MP3 players which at the time could only hold 32 megabytes of music and cost nearly $250. So the question is, where is technology headed in the next 20 years? Wireless headphones is the first uh, innovative technology and the innovative direction which uh, music is heading. We have already seen many wireless headphones that are made and that people buy so that they're not bothered with the hassle of wires. Wireless headphones will be the new norm in listening to music, completely getting rid of wired headphones and relying solely on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The next is bone conduction. A new innovative technology in listening to music is that we will be able to listen to music from other parts of the body. Such an example is Bat Band, created by Banana uh, Studio Banana Things. Uh, Bat Band is a kind of headphone that frees the outer ear. How it works is that you can place the headphones around the skull and music transmit at such a high frequency that the inner ear can pick it up. Although this technology is still relatively new, it is predicted that this innovative technology will be uh, the new norm in headphones. Another is the possible return of vinyl records, according to the director of Orbit Sound, Daniel Fletcher. Vinyl record is this nostalgic thing, and people like it. For the first time, vinyl sells outstripped ad-supported to streaming. It's made a comeback and suddenly become and grown to become a cool thing. He predicts that we will see a lot more of the vinyl records in the next 20 years. Artists' movement from record labels to more independent formats will continue. Artists have complained about the payout schemes and price of having and keeping a record deal for a long time running, and it is only getting worse. It is said that artists these days are only getting 10 to 15% of their sellings. Another reason for the switch to more independent formats is how much easier it is to share the music with the world now. Thanks to social media and streaming like Spotify and Apple Music, artists can get their music out quickly, easily, and at a fraction of the normal price. Record companies also all have their own, but very similar contracts artists must follow. Being tied down by these contracts, for example, can restrict artists from coming out with new music when wanted and ready, and deciding when and where one can perform. Although record labels are skilled in sharing their craft in every angle, such as writing, playing, recording, producing, image, and sponsoring, it is believed more and more artists are wanting to make the switch to being more independent. Spotify, Pandora, and other music streaming sites have begun to take over the music industry. These sites allow the public to listen to nearly any song by any artist for free. There is, however, a catch, whether it be a limited number of times they can skip songs or frequent ads. But if the listener chooses to subscribe or upgrade to a premium account, those catches virtually disappear. These subscriptions cost only about $5 a month for most sites for students. So how is this affecting the music artists? Artists make between six one thousandths of a cent or 84 ten thousandths. That's between .006 and .0086 for each play, according to Spotify's website for their artists. With a global hit album, this could still rack in millions, but not for all artists. This is why Taylor Swift opted to pull her music from Spotify in the end of October in 2014. She said she felt the art of music was being undervalued, as well as the work and the heart of the artists put into their music. Last year, Forbes published an article explaining the uncertainty for streaming companies in their annual earnings, claiming the future of music lies in streaming, but it is on shaky ground. Within the last 20 years, music has, beginning, has begun to change and continues to change. 
music producers and artists used to gain a lot of their revenue and a lot of their profit through the selling of their CDs. But within recent years, that has begun to change. The Wall Street Journal reported on a company called Live Nations who helps put on music festivals and concerts reported that their performance number has increased by 4.4%. The number of tickets sold have increased by 2.7%. The revenue has jumped to 25%, and their tickets have jumped to 7%. So, with this being said, uh, in the past, music festivals used to be something for small groups, for people of the community to gather together and listen to music. However, these festivals have begun to evolve and evolved into something called super concerts, which tend to be more expensive. They have strict security, have VIP options, and they are not only for locals. And people travel from all over the place to hear these artists or these producers to do what they do and produce music. <laughs> However, festivals are now becoming a thing of the past. They are no longer offering the things that they used to, such as showers and toilets, which super concerts now do. Super concerts and festivals, however, will continue to thrive, allowing these producers and these artists to make the profit and even more profit that they used to make. 